Fourth down at eight. Murray. Pressure's coming. Murray's hit as he throws. Looking for Hollywood Brown. Broken up! Broken up by Steven Nelson! Welcome back to your Valley Sports Plug Arizona Cardinals recap for week 11 of the 2023 NFL season. I'm Chris Patrick, and that is Michael Benjamin. We're here to break it all down for you. The Arizona Cardinals travel to the Lone Star State to take on the Houston Texans in NRG Stadium. And when the schedules came out, this game was marked as one that would likely be the worst of any NFL game this season. Dubbed such names as the Toilet Bowl or the Battle of Last Place and so many more. However, by the time we got here to Week 11, that narrative had shifted just a little bit as C.J. Stroud has turned out to be a solid QB1 and the return of Kyler Murray added some additional intrigue there. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it all went down on Sunday. The Arizona Cardinals got the scoring started early in the first quarter. Kyler Murray unloaded a 48-yard pass that found Rondell Moore in the end zone. The score 7-0 Arizona just 92 seconds into this game. The Texans responded later in the first on a 20-yard touchdown pass from rookie C.J. Stroud to veteran tight end Dalton Schultz, and this tied the score at 7 apiece. The Cardinals took the lead back on a 57-yard Matt Prater field goal at the end of the first, and in the second quarter, Devin Singletary found the end zone at the end of an 11-yard rush. This capped off a 10-play, 75-yard drive for the Texans, and the score was 10-14 Houston. With just 26 seconds left in the half, C.J. Stroud connected with Tank Dell for a 40-yard touchdown, and the Texans take a 21-10 lead into the break. The second half was much quieter scoring-wise. At the end of the third quarter, Kyler Murray snuck into the end zone on a one-yard scamper to the outside, chipping away at the Houston lead, and the score was 16-21, Texans still on top. And unfortunately, that would be our final score in this one. The Houston Texans win at home over the Texas legend Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. The Redbirds now stand at 2-9 and nine on the season, and the Texans advance to a remarkable 6-4 and four for the year. After coming off the hype of Mr. Murray's return, this wasn't the follow-up performance I think we were all hoping for. A lot of weak points were exposed on both sides of the football for Arizona. But let's go ahead and pass it over to Michael Benjamin for his thoughts on Week 11 for the Arizona Cardinals. Right off the bat, I have to echo exactly what Chris just said. Wouldn't have told you that this was going to be probably the funnest game to watch of this season before everything started for the Arizona Cardinals. But man, this one was exciting. It really was. Unfortunately for the Arizona defense in the first half, it wasn't. 333 yards given up in the first half. C.J. Stroud was a tactician. 18 of 24 for 259 yards. Tank Dell's touchdown catch was the longest pass allowed by this defense this season. I mean, we could keep going through the list, right? The Texans were 6 of 7 on third down in the first half as well. But Nick Rallis and JG, they must have said something definitive to this defense in the locker room because in the second half, they came out absolutely rolling, no points allowed, and they hold the Texans just to 86 total yards, including two picks deep in Texans territory. Man, I thought Chris Barnes was the flash when he took that one in and headed across midfield. I thought he was going to take it all the way, man. And Antonio Hamilton had a really nice jumped route. Hopefully he's okay because I know he did injure himself at the end of that one. But to pick off C.J. Stroud three times when he only has two all season before this game, it was very impressive from this Arizona Cardinals defense. And I guess the last thing I'll say defensive-wise, I will let y'all speak your negatives on Marco Wilson. I don't have much to say at this point. But K1, right? We know he has some rust, right? But what a first ball to Rondale. That was beautiful. Dropped it right in the basket. But he's just underthrowing right now, right? He underthrew on the pick to Hollywood. That last pass was lofted off of his back foot. And it didn't seem like he was adjusting plays to pressure towards the end of the game. You know, they have seven on the line. They're rushing six. I don't know if that's a play call or Kyler Murray not making adjustments on the line. It's only a second game back, people. But let's look at exactly really why we lost today. And the biggest thing, obviously, is the offense. We're trying to find our footing. We were discombobulated on many occasions. We had to burn timeouts. Since we didn't know the next set and the play clock was about to run out, you know, three for 10 on third down, averaging around seven yards to gain a first, you're putting your offense at a disadvantage. 
and one for four on fourth down. I know a lot of people have their viewpoints when it comes to leaving points on the board early in the fourth quarter. I mean, we lose by five. Definitely could have had two field goals where we get stopped. From my point of view, this team has a lot to figure out offensive-wise. So they're going to be aggressive. And they don't care if it doesn't work out right now. They're trying to see what might work for the future and go from there. And then obviously the big play from today, the turnover on the punt, egregious call folks, didn't touch the Cardinals player. I don't understand how they weren't able to overturn that. But at the end of the day, it didn't matter. We got that pick and we gave ourselves another opportunity to go ahead late, but we couldn't capitalize on turnovers. And that's always tough to see. Man. That was a fun one, but obviously it didn't go our way today. Yeah, I would agree with Mike. Definitely a fun one for sure. And I think in a season like this, it's really about getting better, learning this offense, feeling everyone out, new head coach, new system, a lot of new things happening. But the final score doesn't really tell the full story because you can look at it and say, oh, wow, the Cardinals were close. They only lost by five. But they had so many opportunities to not capitalize on even one of those picks. I mean, the defense really kept us in this one, and their second half was truly incredible. But at the end of the day, it's almost a consolation of eyes on the prize, right? We want Marvin Harrison Jr. We want a high draft pick. It's all about getting better for next year. And I think talking about Marvin Harrison Jr., I mean, Marquise Brown today just proved he is clearly not a franchise wide receiver like a Jamar Chase, a Justin Jefferson, or shit, even a DeAndre Hopkins. Will he be worth paying this offseason? I would be more on the side of wanting to save some money for other pieces that we need on this roster. I mean, you look at the running back room, it's been absolutely in shambles. Just bad luck week after week this season. James Conner is a stud. Him being back is clearly having a net positive for this team, but it's just not enough. Again, it was embarrassing that this offense wasn't able to capitalize on three turnovers that the defense secured. And the success of C.J. Stroud might not bode well for Kyler. I know he's done well in his past couple starts, and I think we'll give him a little more breathing room to shake off that rust, like Mike said. But when you look at his contract, it's a complete albatross, and it'll likely hinder the front office's ability to build a team around him. I just think the Cardinals are going to have a lot of tough questions to ask this offseason when you see a cheap rookie like C.J. Stroud doing so well and some good quarterbacks in college football that might be on the board that the Cardinals could have their eye on. But... What's the market for Kyler? Who's going to take on that contract? Is it something that the Cardinals would have to eat? But I don't want to get ahead of myself there. Lastly, some positives from this week. I would say that Trey McBride is coming out as a solid tight end one and a guy that we can rely on going forward to replace a guy like Zach Ertz. I mean, those big, solid tight ends are a staple in the league now when you're looking at Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews, the Gronk mold, if you will. Trey McBride fits into that. He's a vertical tight end who's not too bad on the blocking, but we'll just have to see where this team can go when it comes to building and continuing on. I think there's, what, Mike, seven games left this season, so we'll have to see what these Redbirds can do and how competitive they want to be as they seek a high draft pick, I guess. I'm not really sure what their motivations are. Regardless, Mike, we got to do it every single week. Who is your player of the recap for week 11? Chris, I am so excited to announce my player of the recap this week. This guy has been doing his part on the special teams and finally, finally got an opportunity today. My player of the recap is wide receiver Greg Dorch. He put him in the Dorcher chamber today, man. He got that opportunity with Michael Wilson being ruled out earlier today, but he had six receptions for 76 yards. He only had one catch coming into today, right? Been primarily our punt returner, and I'm giving him an asterisk for the turnover on the punt. He was trying to wave the guy out of the way. That's not on him, right? But I just love what he does in the mold of a Cooper Cup, being able to sit in the middle of the field and get you extra yards. He also has great speed. We saw a couple of balls to the outside as well and had a huge play late in the fourth quarter to get us to the Texans side of the field. And that was literally just pure heart, man. We're at the point with this team where I don't care where you've been drafted at. You got to get the best players on the field at this point. And Greg Dorch, he's done it the past year and a half, guys. Even with his opportunities just on the punt returns, he's had some great game-changing plays. 
And if he's a game-changing player, why are we not making sure that he's on the field at all times? But, man, love it. Greg Dorch, player of the recap. Let's go, baby. Chris, who you got this week? Mike, the human Dorch. I love it. I'm going to have to go with a guy on the defensive side of the ball, and that is the young safety, Jalen Thompson. Oh, boy, he was making an impact all over the field. He had one of those three picks and did a really good job of baiting C.J. Stroud on that play, begging him to make the pass, daring him to, and the rookie bit, Thompson reaped the rewards of that. He also had one sack, which (laughs) he hit C.J. Stroud so hard that he made him come out of the game. Oh, man, between the pick and the sack, you got to love it. And eight total tackles, the most of any defensive player on the Arizona Cardinals. How could it not be Jalen Thompson? What an absolute stud and a shining spot on this Cardinals defense. Mike, we'll just have to see what these Redbirds can do as they come back home next week to take on the Los Angeles Rams. Kickoff scheduled for 2.05 p.m. Arizona time. Of course, we're going to keep bringing you guys a recap of every single Cardinals game this season. So make sure you subscribe right here on YouTube and set those notifications so you can stay up to date with all the Valley sports and Arizona Cardinals action. For Michael Benjamin, I'm Chris Patrick. We'll see you next time. Peace. Cardinals fans, it's time to stand and bring in your